Why is Elon Musk firing everyone? That's how it started. Elon Musk has fired his longtime assistant who worked for him for 12 years after she asked for a raise. Mary Beth worked for the current Tony Stark for 12 years. She was so close to him. To some extent, it was considered an extension of Elon. She gave herself fully to him. She worked long hours, including weekends and late nights, as she traveled back and forth from Los Angeles to Silicon Valley every week. She once managed Elon's schedule between Tesla and SpaceX. She also assisted in public relations and company decision making. Basically, she was seen as a devoted personal assistant. She brought him meals, managed his business meetings, scheduled time with the children, took care of his clothes, handled the press, and pulled him out of meetings when necessary to keep him on schedule. She came out as a link between Musk and his personal interest and created a real Tony Stark and Pepper Potts scenario. This has made her an invaluable asset to society. Mary Beth knew her worth and thought it was time to ask for a raise. So, she turned to Elon with her request. Musk told her, Look, I think you're very valuable. Maybe the compensation is right. You have to take two weeks off and I'll judge whether that's true or not, notes Ashley's Vance. Elon wanted to know if Mary Beth was indispensable, so he gave her two weeks off to assess how things would go in her absence. After two weeks, Musk made a discovery. He knew he could work comfortably without Beth's assistance. So, he fired her from the role. However, he offered her another position in the company with the same salary. Beth dismissed the offer and left. The experience triggered Musk's reflections on the number of employees he does and doesn't need. If Beth was so close to him and was overly considered an important part of the company, what about the other employees who are not conspicuous? Even though he was modest, he knew he could squeeze in a lot more. Its businesses are critical and every optimization matters. After the incident Musk started thinning his workers. It didn't matter how long you had worked for him. If you were dispensable, you received a dismissal letter. The decision sent shockwaves throughout the industry. Musk stressed that the firings were necessary in order to allow the company to become what it should be, which is a company that operates at the extreme frontiers of technology. In March of the same year, the Observer reported Tesla laid off a third of its global recruiting team which equates to around 150 individuals. Some people have speculated that this willingness to fire employees is a sign that Musk is less concerned with employee happiness and more concerned with the progress of his companies. Musk justified the mass layoffs by pointing to the need to cut costs and become profitable. The decision was also influenced by the fact that most of the people who were fired were paid. I'd rather not have to fire anybody, Musk said. But if we didn't do that, we'd just have a lot of very expensive employees doing nothing. His foresight to fire people paid off. In January 2021, Tesla recorded its first profitable year. They accumulated a profit of $721 million in 2020, which contrasted with a loss of $862 million in 2019. Such a decision is a clear reminder that entrepreneurship is more than just an entrepreneurial spirit. It's also about building high, performing companies that can survive for the long term. Another lesson we learn from this is that we should strive to be indispensable. Otherwise, our value may not be recognized. In such a case, we can easily be terminated. Elon Musk on Friday sacked almost 50% of Twitter's workforce globally. As per reports from multiple news publications, it has been confirmed that employees across various countries were asked to leave. Most of the staff from India have also been asked to leave. After this, Elon Musk via Twitter confirmed the sacking of almost 50% of his employees. He stated that the company had no choice as it was losing a lot of money on a daily basis. He further added that Twitter was losing $4 million per day. In his tweet, he further added that severance packages had been provided to everyone who had been fired. Everyone who was let go received three months of severance pay which is 50% more than what is required by law, he said. There have been worries that the platform's continuous moderation may suffer as a result of Twitter's workforce reductions. That is not the case, the newly appointed CEO of Twitter clarified. To make it completely clear once more, Twitter's strong commitment to content moderation remains unaffected. Contrary to what you may read in the press, we have actually observed a drop in hate speech this week that is below our historical averages. Prior to getting sacked, the employees got an unsigned memo which informed them about the layoffs. It read as follows.
Given the nature of our distributed workforce and our desire to inform impacted individuals as quickly as possible, communications for this process will take place via email. By 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Friday, November 4, everyone will receive an individual email with the subject line, Your Role at Twitter. Please check your email, including your spam folder. Twitter Inc. After laying off roughly half of the company on Friday following Elon Musk's $44 billion acquisition, it is now reaching out to dozens of employees who lost their jobs and asking them to return. Some of those being asked to return were released by mistake, according to two people familiar with the moves. Others were let go before management realized their work and experience might be necessary to build the new features Musk envisions. The people said, asking not to be identified discussing private information. Twitter cut nearly three. 700 people via email this week as a way to cut costs following Musk's acquisition, which closed in late October. Many employees learned they were out of a job after their access to company. Wide systems such as email and in used space was suddenly suspended. Requests for the return of employees show how rushed and chaotic the process was. Twitter has nearly three, 700 employees left, according to people familiar with the matter. Musk is pushing those who remain at the company to move quickly on delivering new features, and in some cases, employees have even slept in the office to meet new deadlines. Over the weekend, Twitter launched a new Twitter Blue subscription plan that offers a verification checkmark for every user who pays $8 a month. The company also said it will launch other features soon, including half-off ads, the ability to post longer videos, and get priority ranking in replies, mentions and searches. Elon Musk has finalized his deal to buy Twitter for $44 billion, a source familiar with the deal told CNN on Thursday. Putting the world's richest man in charge of one of the world's most influential social media platforms, Musk fired CEO Parag Agrawal and two other executives, according to two people familiar with the decision. Twitter declined to comment. Closing the deal removes a cloud of uncertainty that has hung over Twitter's business, employees and shareholders for most of the year. After initially agreeing to buy the company out in April, Musk spent months trying to back out of the deal, first citing concerns about the number of bots on the platform and later allegations made by a company whistleblower. Musk appeared to confirm the takeover in a tweet Thursday night, saying the bird is freed. By finalizing the deal, Musk and Twitter avoided a trial that was originally scheduled to take place earlier this month. But Musk's takeover and the immediate firing of some of its top executives is now raising a host of new questions about the future of the social media platform and the many corners of the company it affects. With these moves, Musk could single-handedly change the media and political ecosystem, reshaping public discourse online and disrupting a nascent conservative social media sphere that emerged largely in response to complaints about bans and restrictions on Twitter and other mainstream services. Earlier this week, Musk visited Twitter's headquarters in San Francisco to meet with employees. He also posted an open letter to advertisers on Twitter, saying he didn't want the platform to become a freewheeling hell where you can say anything without consequence. The acquisition also promises to expand Musk's influence. The billionaire already owns, oversees or has significant stakes in companies developing cars, rockets, robots and satellite internet, as well as more experimental ventures such as brain implants. It now controls the social media platform that shapes how hundreds of millions of people communicate and receive their messages. I hope so. I clear everything. But if you have any questions, you can simply ask me in the comments section below.